So when you become a dividend investor, it's really nice to get those dividend payments coming in every single month. Now this can be difficult to do, especially in Australia, because most of the companies only pay twice a year. There are some funds and real estate investment trusts that pay four times a year, which can be great. But when you're buying regular companies that only pay twice a year and you're trying to structure money to come in every single year, especially when there are some months where a lot of companies pay and some months where there's hardly any companies paying, it can be hard to structure those monthly dividend payments. But I went through the ASX 200 and had a look at all of the companies and which months that they paid in. And while each month might not have the highest paying dividends, I went down to as low as 3% in some cases. There are some really great companies that you can do if you're trying to structure monthly payments coming in. So let's go through the research that I did and we'll go over the companies that I found. All of these companies have some growth over the last five years. They all have good paying dividends. Most of them are over 5%, but there's a few lower than that. And of course, they all have good dividend stability. So if you're looking for a company to pay in a particular month to try and even out your portfolio, some of these companies might be worth looking at. So let's jump in. We'll go through month by month and I'll talk about why I chose those companies. You may not want to structure your portfolio this way. That's perfectly fine. You might want to only go for those that are paying the highest dividends and are the most stable. That's a perfectly reasonable way to do it. But if you are trying to structure it on a monthly basis, then these might be worth looking at. So from my workings out, I've got 19 different companies. They are all from the ASX 200. They all have at least a 3% dividend yield, although I was trying to get my preference, which is for a 5% dividend yield. But there were some months that there was very few companies paying and I was trying to get companies listed every single month. So I went a bit lower if they still had growth over the past five years and they had stable dividends. This is just an example portfolio. I'm definitely not intending for you to buy all of these companies, but if there's a month where you might be looking for a specific company, you might be interested in one of these. We'll start with January. January is not a month that a lot of companies pay in, so I had to look a bit lower than my usual dividend yields, but we've got SCP at 4.9% dividend yield. They pay in January and August. MTS, 4.7% dividend yield. They pay in January and August. CIP, 4.6% dividend yield. They pay January, April, August, and October pay four times. PMV is 3.2% dividend yield and they pay in January and July. Now let's go look at those four companies in a little bit more detail. SCP, which is Shopping Centres Australia, they've increased okay over the last five years and they've been pretty stable with their dividends. In 2020, they did dip a bit, but they look like they're back and doing very well again. Medcash has increased really well over the past five years and their dividends since 2017 have been growing and looking really good. Century Industrial, which is a real estate investment trust, has increased really well over the past five years. The dividends aren't as stable. They look like they're slowly going down, but I would imagine that they stabilize around the 4.6% and they pay four times a year, which is handy. And lastly, we have Premier Investments over five years looking beautiful and their dividend stability has been great as well, except obviously in 2020, they deferred one of their dividends. February is a pretty good month for dividends. The CLW 6.2% dividend yield and they pay four times in February, May, May, August and November. GOZ 5.2% dividend yield in February and August. ABP 5% dividend yield in February and September. DEXUS DXS which is 5.1% in February and August and CNI 3.5% dividend yield in February and July. So let's go into a little bit more detail. CLW Charter Hall increases okay over the last five years. Their dividend stability has been really good and growing over the years though and it's nice and high. Growth Point Properties okay growth over the last five years. Dividend stability has been good. They're starting to recover from 2020 and I think that they'll start to go back up. So we've got Abacus which has slight growth over the last five years but their dividends have been nice and stable. They deferred one of the dividends in 2020 but they're paying it back now. Dexus has had some growth over the last five years, not a great deal, but their dividends are nice and stable. They haven't changed much over the last seven, eight years. We have really high growth with Century Capital. They've increased quite substantially since about 2019 and their dividends have been growing also and are very stable. Now the dividend yield is a bit lower than normal. They do pay in July, which is a hard month to get dividends to pay in. March, we have FMG with a super high dividend yield of 14.5% and they pay in March and September. BHP, also a high dividend, 8.5% and they pay in March and September. You'll find most companies pay in March and September, very popular months for companies to pay. JB Hi-Fi, 5.8% dividend yield. March and September, and AMC, which is a 4% dividend yield, but they pay four times a year.
So let's look at those in more detail. Fortescue Metals is, has had brilliant growth over the last five years and the dividends have been growing crazily as well and it's got a super high dividend yield. BHP again has been growing, most of the materials companies have been and that dividend yield not as stable but has been growing. JB Hi-Fi, one of my favorite retail stocks, has had great growth over the last five years but those dividends are so super stable and growing and we love the dividend yield over 5%. And then we have AMC, not the greatest growth over the last five years and the dividends did dip in 2019 but they've stabilized since then so if you can handle a 4% dividend yield, the reason I've included it is not only that it pays four times a year but it pays in December and June, two months that are hard to find companies to pay in. In April we have Rio, 9% dividend yield in April and September, SUL, 6.7% dividend yield in April and October, GE, 6.5% dividend yield in April and October, SPK, Spark, 5.7% dividend yield yield in April and October and CIP which we already looked at in January. Let's look at the four companies we haven't looked at yet. We've got Rio Tinto, really strong growth over the last five years and the dividends have been growing as well and looking great. SUL, the growth has been okay over the last five years, nothing spectacular but I'll take it. But the dividends have been nice and stable with that nice high dividend yield. Genesis Energy, the growth has been good over the last five years and they have nice stable dividends. And Spark, the growth has been okay over the last five years, but those dividends are growing and nice and stable. May's a hard month to get companies to pay in. We've already got CLW that we already looked at in February, but they also pay May, which is why it's in the May list. June is another month that it's quite hard to find companies to pay in. So we've got a few lower paying dividend yields in June. If you're trying to find companies that pay in June, we've got AMSC, which we already looked at in March. And we've got AST, which is new to the list so far. So let's have a look at that, which has a 3.9% dividend yield and pays in June and December. So AST, Osnet, they're actually going through a takeover bid right now, which is why it's jumped in price quite dramatically. So the growth has been really good because of that. But I didn't choose it because of its growth. I chose it because of the stable dividends. And it's just a nice, stable, reliable dividend stock. In July, we've got CSR, which is a 4.5% dividend yield and pays in July and December. And we've already looked at CNI and PMV previously in January and February. So let's look at CSR. CSR has had a reasonable growth over the last five years and the dividends have been reasonably stable. But of course they're included because even though the dividend yield is not quite 5%, it's nearly there. If they, the dividends are stable and they pay in months July and December where not a lot of other companies pay. Now we hit August, we've got CLW, which is a 6% dividend yield, GOZ, DEXUS, SCP, MTS and CIP, all of which we've looked at previously. But yeah, they pay in August, so that's our list. September is a popular month for dividends. We've already looked at them previously, but we've got FMG, Rio, BHP, JB Hi-Fi, ABP and AMC all paying in this month. In October, we've got SUL, GNE, SPK and CIP, all of which we've looked at before. November has CLW and December, of course, CSR, AMC and AST. And in case it makes it easier, I've put all of the companies and the months that they pay in on just this one page if you want to screenshot it if that makes things easier. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!